Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. The footage you're about to see was recorded during the preview event for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction, so thanks to Wizards for letting me preview the new set. And my first deck here is Mono Black Skeletons, which got quite a few new upgrades, but actually one of the key cards is from Ixalan. Corpses of the Lost is a 3-man enchantment, saying skeletons you control get one extra power and have haste, and when it enters we get to make a 2-2 Black Skeleton Pirate creature token, and then in addition to that, at the beginning of our end step, if we descended this turn, so if a card got put into our graveyard, we can pay one life, and if we do, return it to our hand, so we can replay it and make an additional 2-2 skeleton token essentially, so that gives us some nice late game. And the reason we can now play with this card is that we got a whole bunch of new 1-mana skeletons, and even another skeleton payoff with Gisa the Hellraiser, a 5-mana 4-4, has a ward making the opponent pay 2-mana and 2 life, and then gives our skeletons and zombies plus 1 plus 1 and menace, and whenever we commit a crime, in other words, if we target any of the opponent's stuff, we get to make a pair of 2-2 blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens, and that only triggers once each turn. And of course, being a black deck with a bunch of spot removal, potentially discard effects as well, it's pretty easy to commit crimes to enable Gisa. And then at 1 mana, we've got Tiny Bones, the Pickpockets, a 1-1 with Death Touch, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we may cast, target a non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. So by targeting a card in the opponent's graveyard, that also counts as committing a crime, so that can also enable Gisa's ability, as well as maybe get back a Forsaken Miner from our graveyard. This 1 mana 2-2 two -two Skeleton Rogue cannot block, but whenever we commit a crime, we can pay a black to return it from our graveyard to the battlefield, Field, so that's also a pretty powerful ability, and the fact that it doesn't enter tapped is also quite relevant when we're giving our skeletons haste with Corpses of the Lost, so we can potentially get it back and immediately attack with it, which is also quite nice. And then rounding out our 1-mana Skeletons, we've got Cult Conscript, another 1-mana 2-powered creature. Does enter tapped, so it's quite a bit weaker than the Miner to combo with our Corpses of the Lost, at least. And this one we can get back from the Graveyard for 1 and a black, but only if a non-Skeleton creature died under our control this turn. We do have a few non-Skeletons, Geese, of course, or Zombie Tokens. And then at 2-mana, there's a Deep Cavern Bat, giving us a bit of hand disruption stapled onto a creature. Also counts as committing a crime. And then at 3 mana, Gix, Yogmoth Praetor can draw us additional cards whenever we manage to hit the opponent, and with a few of our evasive creatures like Deep Cavern Bat, maybe some uh, skeletons that gained manas from Gisa, or even our menacing case of the stashed skeleton token, which will be suspected, so it has menace and it cannot block, so that can also be a great setup for Gix on turn 3, and then hopefully those extra cards will win us the game. And then, as we mentioned, case of the stashed skeleton, to solve it, we can't control any suspected skeletons. And then for one on a black, we can sacrifice it as basically a demonic tutor to find any card in our deck. So can maybe find Gisa to end the game, or some removal if we need it. We've got four copies of Go for the Throat, as well as two copies of Pile On, which has Convoke. So also takes advantage of all those cheap creatures we can put on the battlefield, so we can uh, tap them to help pay for it. And then we get to Surveil 2 as well, maybe put some of these skeletons in the grave to eventually get back. And then a mana base has four copies of Mishra's Foundry as another creature land to maybe help deal those last points of damage. And then the Abandoned Mire can also maybe get back a key threat from our graveyard. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We will need to draw a couple more lanes for this to work out. Maybe find some more cheap skeletons. But for now I'll keep. We've got our signature card. And a bit of removal as well. Put into red black. So it could be kind of a mid range or reanimator deck. For now, Tycoon. Alright, can take that out before it makes a treasure. And then next turn, maybe start with our Corpses of the Lost before playing Gix. Hell to pay, we'll leave behind a treasure token. Okay, so we'll make our hasty skeleton. And then we've got Gisa waiting in the wings to pump up our team as well. Opponent passes. Can uh, play Gix, it's unlikely to survive here, but it's worth a shot. Of 
Maybe shouldn't have played Foundry in case we do connect and draw a Swamp. Although, wouldn't be able to cast anything with it. Okay. And then now a Decadent Dragon, so it is maybe a Junt Dragon's deck. There are a few new payoffs for it. Deep Cavern Bait gets to have a look, but we have double Pylon, so they might be better off taking Gisa at that point. And then Pylon's also a way to commit a crime to enable Gisa. Would be great if we can play it and Pylon in the same turn, but won't be able to pull that off next turn yet. And then now the Decadent Dragon. Okay, so we have options. We can just uh, play Gisa, attack with our menacing skeleton, see if they want to trade. That seems reasonable, and then keep Pylon for next turn, hoping they don't have a second bat. And then with Pylon we can maybe commit a crime next turn. Opponent falls to 8. And yeah, any skeletons we draw will also have haste. So it doesn't take too much to close out the game here. I'll put an upkeep stomp on the off chance that I want to pile on before my draw step, since we could maybe surveil into something more relevant. And Gisa does have ward, but it's going to be another hell to pay. Although, hmm, opponent seems to have mistapped. They should have uh, gone for x equals 4, but then they wouldn't have been able to pay the ward. So maybe a slight uh, miscalculation here. Okay, so we can pile on. I guess I wouldn't be able to animate Mishra's Foundry regardless. Get to commit a crime. Make some zombies. And then Tiny Bones seems like a fine draw. As we can play it with haste. And Menace as well. So our opponent can chump and still die. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we've got double miner and a bunch of removal. So, this won't be great against any opponent, but I'll give it a shot. Hopefully we'll find some of our other skeleton payoffs. Alright, can uh, play our case now instead. And at least with all this removal we can commit a lot of crimes to get our miner back from the graveyard if needed. Opponent also playing a crime deck. Okay, I'm not hating Tiny Bones Miner and then Convoke Pylon. It's pretty mine efficient. Don't have to do it now, we can maybe wait and see what else they do. Alright, Gix, that's probably worth taking out as well. So we'll just Convoke, take out Gix, and then take the two. And then another Pylon could be okay, but Corpses is the more exciting card, although it does require an extra land. So probably keep the corpses, and then get rid of Pylon. And then we have double go for the throat in the meantime. Won't be able to cast Gix, unfortunately. Which would also be pretty neat. Okay, now Bloodletter we can also take out with go for the throat. Might be part of the two card combo. And a Deep Cavern Bat we could cast. So let's say we attack all out. Then we can still play the Bat afterwards. And have a look. And yeah, there we see a Rush of Dread to combo with their uh, Bloodletter. 
So probably want to still take it since it can be a pseudo sweeper. And then I'll just go for the throat gigs for the win. So never got to our third lane for our payoff here. But uh, yeah, just a nice aggressive start showing the power of Forsaken Miner on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Tiny Bones into our case. Gix also plays quite well alongside our Menacing Skeleton. And a turn to Tycoon. Tycoon, we could go for the Throat, but since we only have one removal spell, I think I prefer either Case or Deep Cavern Bat. And maybe I should play the Bat to know what's up. And then Gix will be a nice follow-up. Okay, Stimulus Package to make more treasure. Hell to Pay makes even more treasure and is removal. And then Cauldron can maybe combo with some creatures in the graveyard. I think Hell to Pay makes sense as the card to take, so they can't easily take out Gix or my Bat. And then if they play the Dragon as a blocker, we can go for the Throated. And still play Miner, although maybe they'll just ramp out Stimulus Package to make a bunch of 1-1 citizens on the ground. So Tycoon activates. And a Goldvein Hydra is going to be the play instead. Okay. So that gets in for three. I have to take it. And then I can still play Gix and attack with the Bat at the very least. Could also send in Tiny Bones. And offer the trade for Hydra. Yeah, I guess we may as well. Otherwise we're going to attack. Not sure if this is a race we're winning. Although giving them a bunch of treasure is also scary with Stimulus Package making citizens. So do I just keep taking three from the Hydra and not attack on the ground? Maybe. And then next turn we can add some more creatures to the board. So Goldvein hits for three. Now of course a Tycoon will also lose the opponent some life if we do eventually give them some treasure. So that could also come up. So Tycoon makes treasure and their stimulus package. Which represents 1-1 one, one citizen tokens as well. Okay, so... We can play Case of the Stashed Skeleton. And then... Yeah, I guess now with the package there's no risk of the opponent losing life to their Tycoon, so they can just sacrifice all the treasures right away. At least Gix can hold off the 1-1s. One I can't say the same for my other creatures. So yeah, I think the Bat attacks. And then the plan is just to play a bunch of Skeletons. Okay, can make it double case of the stash skeleton now. Now if we solve the case, we can potentially search up Gisa to give the team menace. But uh, yeah, I don't think we want to take out our own skeleton necessarily, so it would have to trade. But trading it for a citizen also feels bad. So Tycoon trigger on the stack. They're maybe going to use it to adventure the uh, Decadent Dragon. And that could hit some removal spells as well. They probably won't be too happy with our skeletons that enter tapped or cannot block. So I'll take three from Hydra once again. And the package also doesn't care about treasures being tapped. So it does have pretty good synergy with Hydra. And uh, Hell to Pay, for instance. Alright, Cauldron at least doesn't have any creatures in the graveyard. So we could 
go for the Throat Tycoon to attack with our Skeletons and potentially even Gix since we have a replacement, although then they can trade for the Hydra. So maybe it's just go for the Throat Tycoon and then attack with those that can attack past the Hydra. And hope to draw something useful. And I guess now with the Tycoon in the graveyard, Cauldron can add another counter to the Hydra, so it would be 4 damage next turn. Alright, we found Gisa, that's quite relevant. And another case, so we can load the board full of skeletons, and hopefully next turn attack for the win. Trying to deny them those additional blockers from Stimulus Package. Alright, opponent actually goes to the Tycoon, and then Hydra can now activate to make a treasure, and then in turn make a citizen. So that's a pretty neat engine. So Hydra attacks, we'll take it. But yeah, our opponent can make quite a few blockers, so it's not guaranteed that Gisa gets us there next turn. Decadent Dragon, and a Deep Cavern Bat doesn't change the math too much. So, yeah, these can tap, making treasures switch turn into citizens, but it doesn't change the number of blockers they have. So for blockers, Gisa pumps a team, gives Skeletons Menace. So, block one, two, three. Then we should have two plus another uh, nine going through, so that's eleven. So that would put them to one. Well, that's not lethal. But I guess it's the best we can do here. And I feel like if the game progresses, we're just gonna fall further and further behind. So they should be able to survive this attack, barely. And again, there's no risk of them losing to their Tycoon with a package in play. So this is exactly 11 damage. Put Tycoon first, I guess. And then can I afford to draw? So Tiny Bones also triggers, but they've got a Cauldron to deny the ability from being too relevant. Tiny Bones actually uh, commits a crime here as well, so it's a great enabler for Gisa and the Forsaken Miner. Could have played Swamp first to maybe get it back, but uh, yeah, with her opponent at one, the extra treasures from Goldvein Hydra, they should be able to kill us on the way back, even if I decline to draw with Gix's ability. So I don't think there's much we can draw into, don't have any way to damage the opponent for one mana. But uh, I guess we'll see what we would have drawn into out of curiosity. Pylon doesn't change it since we can't cast it. Can play a conscript. And that's a swamp. Alright, GG's. Good to see some pretty neat treasure synergies in action. And we almost got there. Pretty tricky to play around the uh, Hydra, since you don't want to take damage, but at the same time you don't want to give them a bunch of treasure right away. Hell to pick and only target creatures. But opponent can uh, attack all out. So even had we stayed at 7, we still die here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Conscript into either one of our two drops, and then corpses on three. Since it gives our skeletons haste, makes it 
maybe better to play case afterwards so we can immediately attack with our token and then in the meantime have a look with our deep cavern bat let's see what we're up against also if we did have our miner in our opener that's uh, definitely reason to play conscript first since it enters tapped so you can play hasty miner after you play corpses opponent on blue red so we'll attack and then play our bat They might be playing a deck with a new 1-2 flyer that can deal a lot of damage. So then they might have some cheap burn spells or card draw. And then Spire Bluff, also a very nice addition for the archetype. And yeah, there we see Slickshot show off. And then a bunch of cantrips, Fading Hope can bounce or bat. So if I take the Slickshot, we can force them to bounce. Then next turn they get to play it versus if I take Fading Hope, then next turn they can either cast it or end of turn consider and do something else. Slickshot is a problem. Yeah, I guess we just uh, force them to Fading Hope here. All right, point going for consider instead. Fading Hope would also be pretty good against our skeleton tokens. So in a way we prefer them bouncing the Deep Cavern Bat. And our opponent declined another slick shot. I guess their second land currently entered tapped. So that maybe explains it. Okay, now I could play another band to take away the Fading Hope. But it wouldn't be very mana efficient. So I think I still prefer corpses, attack all out. And then next turn we can double spell. Yeah, if you're playing a low curve deck, a land like Stormcarved Coast can be quite punishing. So you'll sometimes see mana bases with only the fast lands and pain lands instead. So we'll probably start by playing Deep Cavern Bats. They may Fading Hope and Response, but then we can still maybe replay one of them. Possible they picked up another removal spell in the meantime. They're just going to bounce the skeleton token. It's end of turn. There's also a chance we'll pick up our Corpses of the Lost, so we can replay it next turn. Also have Mishra's Foundry we can activate. Alright, so Song of Tottentons, probably fine. So we'll just take the Fading Hope. And then play our case. And smash. A token does not enable descent if it gets bounced. So, probably just gonna activate Mishra's Foundry next turn unless we draw another skeleton. And there's currently not that much our opponent can do to interact. Get to untap, conscript, enter stamped. Can always play it second main. And I hope they didn't pick up a one mana removal spell here that they can maybe copy with iteration. All right, maybe they did. That could be bad. And yeah, play with fire. So that was a worst case scenario. Although it looks like we'll still get there for damage. Will be exactly enough. And then now they also enabled Corpses of the Lost, so we would have been able to pick it up end of turn. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got Case into Corpses of the Lost, so that's a decent start. Sadly missing a 1-drop, so it's not quite the perfect curve. Although now double corpses can definitely add on to the pressure. Epicure attacks, we'll take it. Can block, so don't really have a choice. And now Anvil. So there's a sacrifice deck here, and Gleeful Demolition as well, making three 1-1s. One yeah, that's a problem. It's a lot of blockers to get in front of our menace creature. Uh, 
good. I guess we're still attacking here. Better to trade for two one ones than not doing anything. And then next turn we get to play Tiny Bones and another Corpses. This might be playing the new 4-mana dragon that can cheat creatures into play by sacrificing stuff. Since they're making lots of tiny creatures. There might be a reanimation angle. And yeah, there we see Atraxa discarded. So it's possible that they're trying to cheat it into play by reanimating it. Or again, it could be that new 4-mana dragon for double black, double red. That requires three creatures to be sacrificed. Either way, we get to play Tiny Bones. And yeah, we can't really use a Gleeful Demolition. I guess we could to destroy Onicult Anvil, although they're just going to block Tiny Bones here uh, and go for the Throat Can't take out their artifact. So I think we're better off just playing another Corpses at that point. And then they trade for Tiny Bones. Got our opponent down to 10. And I don't think we want to pick up corpses since we have other plays we can make next turn. But uh, it's nice that we have the option. So we'll see if they can reanimate a truck side. If they do, we can still go for the throat at least. Just another Epicure for now, which enables Anvil. We're also down to 9 in the meantime. Now 8 with Anvil. And a Harvester. All right, that's a lot of stuff. Now we can empty our hand at least. And then let's see, probably take out Harvester now. Or we can let them block, which I guess is still acceptable to an extent. So yeah, what happens if we take out Harvester now? Opponent's got two blockers. They can jump, trade for Tiny Bones. We're not really in danger of dying next turn. Problem is if they can reanimate Atraxa. I guess we'll still have our menacing skeletons to maybe get there. Versus if we attack now, they can more easily trade for my Pirates. Trade for Tiny Bones. Maybe that's okay, actually. Opponent will double block our Menacing Skeleton, maybe. Nope, those are the original blocks I thought they would make. Yeah, it's uh, not an easy call to make. So now back to a Chum block instead, keeping the Harvester. So Harvester can take out one of my creatures. I think we're okay with that since I'm going to pick up one of the corpses. And then if they try and attack for the win next turn by animating the creature lands, we can still go for the throat. Opponent discards Tyrants. Well, if they reanimate that one, we don't stand a chance. So now Harvester can be used as removal anymore. They're out of artifacts for Anvil. I guess it can still sacrifice itself. But uh, technically, if they animate Restless Vents and attack all out, they would have lethal. But they're not going for it. Alright, so do we take 5 or do we go for the Throat Harvester? If I take 5, I could die to this Anvil, so I think I gotta take out Harvester. Second Anvil. So they have to sacrifice Anvil to itself. Make two 1-1s one -ones back up to 4. And they can make it 5. But now Gisa giving the team Menace and plus 1 plus 1 should do it. Although another Corpses should also get it done here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we'll go with Gisa. And uh, if they can't remove it, which with Ward is pretty tricky, this should get there.
All right, sweet. So close one here against the uh, Sacrifice Reanimator deck. All right, so we get to see this mono black Skeletons in action. Now, of course, do keep in mind I'm playing this in the preview event, so we're not playing against the typical meta decks that you'll encounter on the ladder. This deck is going to be pretty vulnerable against a deck like Boros Convoke, making a ton of tokens, making it hard for the Skeletons to connect, and then in turn, cards like Gix also get a lot worse. So I don't expect it to be a main contender in the uh, standard meta, but if you enjoy a more casual Skeleton deck, it's a lot of fun. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.